Sun. Uh, we're up here in uh, Mount Baker, Snoqualmie, United States Forest. And behind me is an old growth western red cedar. At one time, the cedars went all the way to the shoreline. And they're a couple thousand years old. The trees were so thick you couldn't walk through the forest, the old growth. But <clears throat> uh, most of the forest has been logged. And so there's quite a few old growth cedars yet, but they're hard to come by. And so we work with the U.S. Forest Service here, and there's one tree that fell from this spot. It got undermined by all the wind and the rain and the snow, and it finally fell. But this tree behind me is also going to fall. And it's undermined about 60% of its root wad is exposed to the elements. And so when we talked to the Forest Service, they said we could have this log for the National Library of Medicine project as well. And so we're really fortunate to have some elders from the Lummi Nation and uh, some trained uh, traditional uh, young persons from Navajo Nation that have come here to help us pray for this, this tree here and the one that's already down. We come here today to pay honor. This man that's going to take you home, not to take your life, but to give you new life, to transform you, that you will bring hope, peace to our people throughout the nation. When we uh, come and take a, a tree out of the forest, we're supposed to be appreciative. We're supposed to be respectful. And we're supposed to humbly ask permission to take this tree because the forest is full of medicine and the cedar tree is just one more of the medicine people. Uh, this totem pole is for the National Library of Medicine and the story is about uh, protection and preservation of traditional knowledge and traditional medicine. Totem poles are about symbols and the symbols usually tie to uh, stories, legends, myth, folklore. It uh, ties to the, some of the traditional knowledge within a native community and they all have their stories about their relationship with the earth. And in that relationship over time they learned about medicine. We're pretty excited about participating with the National Library of Medicine. We know that they have a national uh, library as well as regional uh, branches of the National Library. And they, they also make themselves available and participate with local universities on uh, uh, different projects and uh, programs. And so, uh, as Native communities, uh, we know that we have culture and we know that we have traditional knowledge. We know that we have uh, uh, knowledge handed down from generation to generation about traditional medicines, but we don't know how to protect it. Uh, most of the time, uh, we learned over the centuries to keep it quiet. And so we're hoping that the journey as we go to the various uh, Native communities uh, will create awareness you know, and that, uh, that we'll uh, come to understand that the National Library of Medicine is a resource, that it has information that uh, we can access and utilize also, that it's not a one-way relationship. It's not them coming to us and asking to document and catalog everything we know. It's them coming to us saying, this is what we know, you know, and you're welcome to it. You know, and uh, I think that's a good public institution that, uh, yeah, it has a basic uh, open door and it's transparent.
For Native peoples, healing is more than the treatment of physical symptoms. You see, Native healing is intertwined with larger concepts, such as self-respect, spiritual balance, family, and a connection with the land. That's why for Native peoples, individual healing cannot be separated from community wellness. They're one and the same. In this exhibition, we explore these Native concepts of health and wellness. Honoring the Native tradition of oral history, we have gathered a chorus of healing voices from across the country so that you may hear their stories in their own words. A reverence for nature is common among all Native peoples. Unlike modern society, which erects barriers between itself and the natural world, Native cultures derive strength and healing from the land and water. Individual wellness cannot be achieved when the connection to nature is missing or contaminated. You'll hear personal stories about the importance of land, water, the environment, and the medicinal plants that have been a source of healing for millennia. So this is how we, this is Hinahina Kakai, and this is the mu'e of the green tea leaf. Okay. This is for a broken bone. Native peoples believe that each person has a responsibility for his or her proper behavior and health. These stories offer ideas about personal responsibility, family and tribal ties, role models, and identity. Our Native men are still leaders in our communities. In days of old, they would stand and they would protect their families. They would die mm -hmm. for their women and their children. And what we're saying is do that again. Yeah. Come back and do it today. And this time do it um, around domestic violence, child sexual abuse, and child neglect. End that for us as mm -hmm. strong men and warriors, just like they did in the days when they had to stand up and fight yeah. for us. We want them to do it today. The gathering of the community is a cherished practice because in a traditional society, the community is a source of support and healing. For Native peoples, individual health cannot be separated from community wellness. You'll hear about the differences between life on the reservation and life in the city and attitudes that Native people share regardless of where they're living. The displacement of Native people to cities has had a profound effect on just their psyche, how they see the world, how they view the world, their ability to trust people, their ability to, to uh, interact in a way that uh, allows us to be able to, to um, instill in them a sense of belonging, a sense of uh, well-being that can translate then into better health. Native peoples live in two worlds, one that honors the ways of their ancestors and one that acknowledges the conveniences and challenges of modern society. Wellness is sought through the preservation of languages, ceremonies, and burial practices. Reverence for the Creator and respect for the wisdom of elders are important traditions that have survived for millennia. You'll also hear stories of loyalty and military service that exemplify modern Native traditions of service and patriotism. It was 0900 when we hit the beach. We maintained communication under all kinds of fire, snipers, you name it. The officer or somebody writes the message. All they do is all in English, the message, and all we do is transmit into Navajo. Yeah. In Navajo, there'd be another talker. We sent close to 800 in 48 hours. It came out perfect. Taken together, these concepts influence a Native person's approach to good health and inform their decision whether to pursue Western medicine or traditional healing practices when confronted with an illness. Well, I'm glad we're beginning to recognize officially 
the worth of these native doctors. And uh, I'm glad we're doing this in Native Americans, the Indians also. The Congress of the United States is considering a native sovereignty measure. Yes. Which would give them federal government recognition as we give to Indians. Yes. And once that is set up, uh, I think one of the high priorities would be to set up a native hospital to revive the practice of native medicine, for example. I think that's a good thing. <laughs>